what is your religion today we are celebrating the day of love unless we know love how can be celebrated first let me speak what is religion is the religion that has been told to you that you are born in this family is your religion you are born in a hindu family or a christian family or a muslim family and that is your religion no i give you my own example when i was 10 or 11 one day i asked my grandmother what is my religion i am born in a hindu family and brought up in a sufi environment where our ancestors from few generations were naqshbandi sheikhs not followers naqshbandi sheikhs masters i asked her what is my religion she looked at me this is a strange question coming from someone she told me your religion is the same as that of god that brings a question to your mind what is the religion of god and also many question comes is god a person just like me what does god refers to if he is a person like me then he must have a religion and if he is a person like me and has a religion then what is his religion she simply looked at me and said you ask too many questions that you have to find yourself the real answer to a question cannot be given by someone you have to explore that within your being in the deepest core of your being and how can you discover and what is the method of discovering that in the deepest core of your being is it going and reading this and that and all that how can you reach to the innermost core of the house do you need a road map if you have to explore a particular building do you have to go somewhere you have to have a road map in the beginning a little bit is needed but then you have to explore on your own and the process of exploring that is meditation now in order to explain this that a person goes into the meditation and he discovered it by nature we like stories and when something is woven around the story it hangs around our consciousness and we can never forget so each religion has created a story how its preceptor discovered that sikh religion says nanak drowned in the river islamic tradition says holy prophet attained to miraj he went on the mount hir and he went in the company of allah subhanahu wa taala is there any person like allah subhanahu wa taala sitting somewhere and next where nanak's rab is sitting in where he has to go and meet when you go into intense meditation there is a state of trance sufis call this a state of hal when kawals the singers who are sufi singers 
when they go to offer their khiraz aqidat that is the technical term means their flowers of respect on to the sheikh they recite qasida nat duruz and many things when they are singing the person gets in a state of trance that is known as hal they start dancing they start behaving in an unusual manner the moment ram krishna used to see the vision he will become maddened with it when holy prophet had the first encounter of allah subhanahu wa taala it is said he came back and he inquired poet or mad he got fear and that time he envisions something islamic tradition it is said that allah subhanahu wa taala said read he begins to see a clear image of entire creation a spiritual vision which normally happens when one reaches to the seventh body and the vision is so magnanimous you have seen something that your understanding cannot grasp and that is what happened to holy prophet and after that after the vision one wants to describe it describe it to his friends and families it is said that every day for 22 years holy prophet used to go on the mountain in an intense state of meditation where he will get the vision and he will come back and narrate that vision to his disciples remember over this he has no control if there is a disturbance he will forget that he may not remember all that in the same way when i begin the talk i do not know what i am going to speak on the moment the skype is connected i am connected to each one of you i remain quiet for a few moments then the words start flowing i can see the image that i need to explain to you all in a magnanimous way that happened it is said about a hindu scripture bhagavad gita Vedavyas the sage poet went into his intense meditation he get the vision and he was so overwhelmed with this vision he wanted to explain this to the people but when he came out of that the state diluted and he forgot all that he has seen because what you are seeing on a tv screen it is like a tv screen you are seeing something on the tv screen and then you want to write its description it becomes very difficult you cannot go back or do something so that you can remember and record it it is very difficult to do that first day's message could not be recorded in a smaller way the similar situation i face when there is a disturbance comes from any source that what i want to tell or say or speak gets faded away and i do not remember what i am supposed to speak to you then articulation i have to make the words then second day veda vyas again went into intense meditation the vision came he wanted to write he forgot that again 
because there was disturbance and when you come out of that state there is dilution third day he prayed he prayed that o oh lord you are giving me such a magnanimous vision how can it be preserved for posterity the future generation said that the elephant headed hindu god ganesh appeared he became his scribe to write down everything ganesh put a condition that i will write everything and the moment you become silent you pause i will leave and go vidavyas understood that and accepted that condition he started now he is seeing a vision and he is narrating that vision and somebody is writing that so vidavyas put a condition he know that he has to explain that vision and then someone has to write it and the one who is writing is a very fast writer so he also put a condition when he narrated the first sutra dharma kshetre kuru kshetre samveta yuyutsava mam kah pandavas chayiv kim kurvat sanjay the blind king dhritras ask a question o sanjay the narrator explained to me what is going on on the battlefield of dharma kshetra the field of religion kuru kshetra the field of action between my sons and that of pandu that have gathered with a desire to fight ganesh described became bemused why is he using the two words dharma kshetra the field of religion and field of action why it is being said why it is being said the field of religion and field of action he got confused so then with a we ask put a condition that whatever i am explaining to you you have to understand it first and then write not that i said dharma kshetra kuru kshetra and he write it as it is so the first two days message was not recorded there is a missing link and that missing link exists in all the religions all the messages be it of holy prophet be it of nanak be it of ram krishna be it of veda vyas the great hindu scripture or the holy quran Quran, pa Quran, maji, or Bible, and that link comes when you go, when you understand what is your religion, what is your essential religion means, what is your essential nature, what is the essential nature of a particular thing. The problem arises: man is not living in his essential religion. instead he is living in an outward religion your religion is that which evolves out of you not that which has been imposed on you and that which evolves from within you is the religion of god allah subhanahu wa taala or whatever you want to call him and when my grandmother told me your religion is the same as that of god she meant that i have to explore what is my essential nature swadharma so that i do not live in the religion which is imposed by others my ways and means may be different my why do i eat food simply to satiate my hunger and sustain my body the body needs sustenance and the being needs sustenance in order to sustain body i have to eat food whether i eat italian food thai food 
Chinese food, Indian food or American food, it does not matter. What matters, what I am eating, is it to satiate my hunger and give nourishment to all the cells in the body. First, there has to be an awareness that you are eternal, imperishable, bliss incarnate, is your essence, this is your essence. You are not the body that was born at a particular day and will disappear on an, another day. Awareness that you are eternal, imperishable, bliss incarnate is your essence. You can call this nur or light. It is said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the man in his image and he took out the light from his forehead and put it into the man and the light could not stay because there was darkness. Then he took out the light from the forehead of Hazrat Pagambar sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then it, the, the room could stay inside. This is new, this is awareness, this is light. These words are not the words that have to be understood in their diction, dictionary meaning. This light, this awareness is your beingness or your essential religion. To live with this is your essential nature or swadharma. Swa means self. Dharm means religion. Religion means to live in your essential nature. You are human being, your essential nature or swadharma. Establish a communion between two aspects, the human and being. Being that comes into, which enters, which incarnates. And human is the word that comes from the root humus, that which is formed. A certain aspect is formed with the interaction of a woman's sperm that is human and that which enters, which is eternal, which is of the nature of light, which enters when the body is formed. So your essential nature or swadharma, real religion is to establish a communion between these two aspects, human and being. But you live as body, mind and intellect. All the so-called outer religions are either the religion of the body at the level of rituals or the religion of the mind at the level of understanding that I am born in a Muslim family, Islam is my religion. And Islam is the best religion or Hinduism is the best religion or Christianity. This is out of realm. And living in that, you are living in the religion of the other. The word human comes from the word humus, the soil. Because in order for the seed to grow, for something to grow, a soil is needed. You can, you like a flower that is given to you. You take that cut flower that you buy in the flower shop and plant it in the soil. Will it grow? No. In order for something to grow, it must grow its roots and the roots have to go deeper into your being, deeper into the soil and then as deeper the roots go, healthier the plant becomes. Then one day its essence manifests in the form of beauty and fragrance. And that which manifests in the form of beauty and fragrance is the religion of the flower. Now, we go, we off carry the flowers. So what happened? The flower has blossomed. The seed has blossomed into a beautiful flower, is spending, is spreading its beauty and fragrance. And you Take this flower and carry it to your place of worship. It is a borrowed religion. You are taking something which is not yours, which has not evolved out of you, 
you bought it in the market and you carry it to your temple to your place of worship and you call it that you are a very religious person that which evolves out of you when the seed grows deeper into the soil into your innermost core and out of that as a fragrance something evolves that is your essential religion that is your nature the being and the soul the humus is the soil and soul is the being is the source of unique light that you are when there is a communion between the two the soul which is the noor and the soil the root then life comes into existence your journey begins life is a communion between the soil and the soul the light and the soul humus being is conscious entity and human humus is a physical entity it has two aspects you have two aspects the physical entity and the consciousness or the spiritual entity humans are one of the many living organisms present on the earth you are physically made up of exactly the same element that forms all the other entities that exist on earth be it animal kingdom be it vegetable kingdom whatever grows on the earth the root of all that is the same and when you die your body returns to the earth water fire air and space a person sustains the combination of elements already present in the body through breathing air consuming food and liquids taking in those elements found in the surrounding natural world these are five elements of which the human body is composed of after a deep research all this was explored this five element theory the earth the fire the water the space all these are cre- create a similarity between humans and the natural world surrounding them in our body there is a space is present where there is a how is this space available within us as a medical person you will know there is cavity like in the nostrils mouth ears throat lungs stomach everywhere there is a cavity there is a space what does cavity means this is a space that exists within nostril the air to ears throat lungs everywhere there is a cavity and what is air air is the movement that happens in lungs heart stomach intestine joints and fire is all metabolic activities the eyes intelligence and body temperature water in all plasma blood mucus saliva everywhere there is water the fluid contents and earth or the earth is the solid structure like fat muscles skins nails and hair hindus speak of these five essential elements does it mean whatever i said that the space cavity is not in a christian or in a muslim or in a jew or the water content is not their human body is composed of 70% of the water this is your essential nature that your body is composed of five elements i have given you a scientific analysis the basic 
elemental compatibility or similarity between earth and human humans clarifies why substance found in the natural world plants herbs foods are usually harmonious with human system they can be easily absorbed and cause no adverse reaction or side effects if consumed in appropriate quantity because they are fundamentally the same in character and composition this is why foods and herbs are able to heal human body and your food that you cook should be should have the capacity in blending everything you create something that is capable of healing your body vegetation can repair and restructure human because they share a common elementary basis your body is composed of the same five elements that i explained of nature without which you will cease to exist your body demands those elements to maintain inner balance and survival the first element is air now i explain that air is a part of all the organs air is the carrier of oxygen can you say that oxygen is only used by hindus because it is the hindu scientists the spiritual scientists who said that human body is composed of five elements the air the fire the earth the water the space so it does not apply to a muslim or a christian can you say that a muslim does not breathe air breathe oxygen without a oxygen you cannot exist you can exist without going to the temple or church or mosque or reciting your scriptures like a parrot your but you cannot exist without oxygen your body is composed of oxygen and no other gas can replace oxygen a muslim cannot say that it is a oxygen is a hindu way i will uh, breathe carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide because i don't follow the hindu way can you see that and can you survive the next element is water your body contains 70% of water when you are thirsty do you realize what happens then the inner balance of the water content in the body is lost and then you drink water why do you drink water to quench your thirst it is said no you are drinking water as much to establish the balance within of the fluid which is lost and once that balance is established you do not need any more water at that time and this balance keeps on uh, getting disturbed again and again you say thirst is quenched can you replace water with any other fluid or a muslim say that i am not going to drink water because water is said that hindus say that this is a religion of the kafir because it is the hindus who say that human body is composed of water but we don't believe in that the third element is fire fire helps in maintaining your body temperature once this balance is disturbed you are sick this fire is in many forms in digestive fire helps in digestion through digestion food is assimilated and absorbed in the cells of the body this brings energy cow is considered a sacred animal according to hindus it eats grass and converts into blood and gives you milk which is white in nature pure and you eat all these things and what you generate hate anger jealousy cow eats grass the element that is available in the nature 
and gives you milk which is purity. You eat all that is available in the nature and you get manifest anger, jealousy, hatred, there is no trace of love. Then you pretend that is love. Although such awareness is propagated by Hindu seed, does this not apply to an atheist or the follower of other religions? When Albert Einstein discovered the theory of relativity, he was a Jew. Thus, whatever does his discovery of theory of relativity not apply to others? When Galileo said, it is the earth that moves around the sun, not the vice versa, does this not apply to people of other sects? To understand this, to live in that awareness is your essential religion. There is something within your physical entity that demands these natural elements. These are five elements. In the same way, the soul or the being or the noor or light requires something for its survival. And that which is required by the soul is known as seven values, elements. The essential values that are necessary for the survival and sustenance of the soul or the being or the light. The first is a spiritual wisdom or awareness. When Holy Prophet Hazrat Aghambar Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went according to your stories on Mount Heap, he went in a state of intense meditation, he got the vision, he saw something that is spiritual wisdom or awareness. When Vedavyas went into that state, he envisioned something. And every single syllable that he spoke is relevant. It is not, when I am speaking a particular sentence, the words, the language, they all are interwoven in a particular way to create an energy field. Some of these may be dormant, may act as a catalyst, others may be very active and some may be inactive. But when all these words put together, it creates a meaning. This is a spiritual awareness or wisdom. It is essential to offset the effects of ego, that I am separate from the whole. Ego separates you from the whole. It does nothing. A spiritual wisdom does nothing. Instead, it acts as a catalyst in the process of sustenance. With such wisdom, ego vanishes, nafs dissolves. Then you can see the totality. The person whom I hate, whom I pretend to love, breathes the same air, eats the same food, shares the same space. And with that wisdom, the relations are sustained. Then the second element is purity. It is another and the most essential element. Purity encompasses all that flows out of you in the form of emotions, thoughts and actions. Sometimes you meet a person and neither his emotions are pure or whatever you see, whatever he says, you do not find any sincerity or purity in him. You cannot interact with that person. Purity is another essential element for your inner quality to manifest. Purity encompasses all that flows out of you in the form of emotions, thoughts and actions. When there is a spiritual wisdom or awareness, there is purity. What flows then? The third element, love, is the element that your being is composed of. 
you are composed of the element that is called love. Love is the experience of your innerness, your spiritual wisdom or awareness, inner purity. That the, when you have experienced love within, you have discovered the unfathomable reservoir within that there is a trance that you had been in the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or God. It is said Moses used to go on the Mount Tur and used to and speak to his father. That is whether you go on top of the mountain or you go deep within means the same thing. Nanak went into the river. Moses went on Mount Tur. Holy Prophet went on Mount Hir. Vedavyas went into his intense state of trance. Whatever is the way that you are discovering the unfathomable reservoir within, then love enriches you. Love is sharing that you have discovered something within you. On this day, when the entire world celebrates the day of love, you must know that Love first enriches you, then it becomes a sharing. And sharing because you have discovered something within you, there is tremendous, you are overflowing that joy, next joy, and you want to share it with the entire world. Bible, Quran e Pa, Quran e Majid, Bhagavad Gita is the overflow of love that was experienced by you. Jesus, Holy Prophet, Vedavyas, and you want, they want to share it with you all and for the future generation. When there is awareness, purity and love, the next element, fourth element, peace is born. We talk about world peace and in the name of the world peace we have seen, we see jihads, only religious wars all around. With awareness, purity and love, the fourth element which is the essential nature of the being, the soul, is born, peace is born in you. You are the embodiment of peace. Peace surrounds you like an aura. These four elements together bring the next element, harmony. Harmony brings happiness. Bliss then overflows the sixth element. Fifth element is happiness. These four elements, awareness, purity, love and peace, bring harmony and that brings happiness. When there is happiness within, your beauty and the fragrance will overflow. It doesn't matter what you do. You may be polishing your shoes. You may be a potter like Hazrat Shah Bahauddin Naqshband for his sustenance, for his living. He is making the pots and on the pots he is creating the, inscribing the intricate spiritual designs. You may be making a dish, but that becomes a manifestation. The bliss overflows in that form. And when all these six elements are in synergistic harmony, then what is born? Tremendous willpower. The quality that is the essence of divine, that you can do anything, you can ward off any problem that comes, that you encounter in life. To establish these seven elements is your essential religion. I am not concerned with Hinduism, Islam or Christianity or anything else. These are outer religions. You wear clothes and every day you change your clothes. For every occasion you wear a different outfit. These are the outer garments. The inner is totally different. 
the innerness of each one of you, irrespective of your outer garb, is the same. You are made of this stuff that is called love, that is called bliss, that is called harmony. And unless you discover within you, you will not know what is your religion and you will never be able to attain to that state of blissfulness by living in outer religion. That is why I call these religions as fake ones. They are outer. And these outer religions have created so many conflicts, wars and jihads. That is why these are fake ones. Unless you are established in your essential nature, you will never be attained to a blissful existence. Love will not overflow as your beauty and fragrance. Being is to establish in its nature and then body has to establish the inner balance. Unless this happens, you cannot be called man. Man, human being it is called, a relation, a harmony between your two aspects, the humus and the soul, being. The moment you have established that, you are totality. You are, you have attained to godliness. You have attained to totality. You have attained to oneness. Then you can interact with every single person. Yes, two persons, they have their own outer appearance. When the same outfit two people wear, it looks different. The same outfit is, outfit is being, is bought by people of different ethnicity, maybe a white person, an African, an Indian. The outfit will look different, but it will decorate each one of you. Then whatever you manifest according to your own outer talent, that will become your beauty and that will engulf in the outer atmosphere. This is your essential nature. This is what I was told in one line. Your essential nature, your dharma, religion is the same as that of God. This was told to me. When you meditate on these words, it, you get into a vision, a trance. What is the religion of God? Is he a person sitting somewhere? Chanting his psalms or mantras or Bhagavad Gita or Durud Sharif? What is he doing there? And if he is a person that the creation came so long ago, how old that would he be? No, there is no such thing like a person sitting somewhere. It is a totality. God is not important. Godliness is important. Godliness is a quality that can come to you. When drop merges in the ocean, drop does not become ocean, but it becomes ocean-like. It becomes ocean. And that is the meaning of the word Tao Sho Buddha, which I had explained in all the books. When the drop merges into the ocean, in its quality it becomes ocean, not quantity-wise. And that godliness, that oceanic quality, is the essence that you are. This is your essential nature. When you understand this, love will overflow.